very important, you know, especially on those low index soils that where there is additional K required that you come back after the crop has been cut to maintain those K levels because K is very, very important in sustaining good yields of, of grass silage. Hello, I'm Kieran Lynch and welcome to Overcast, the Chalker Sheep Podcast. Each episode will bring you less insights, advice and technical updates for the sheep industry. In this week's episode, we speak to Chagas Specialist Mark Bronca to explore the nutrient requirements of this year's silage crop. Mark provides valuable insights into nitrogen, phosphorus and potassium demands of silage crop, detailing how soil and farm revenue may contribute to that supply and what additional inputs may be necessary to achieve optimal yields. We also discuss the essential role of sulphur and why it should be incorporated into fertilizer applications. Additionally, Mark offers guidance on selecting appropriate fertilizers for grazing applications and strategies to replenish nutrient offtake during the summer. We hear now from Mark. The grass silage crop is a, it's a very important crop on the farm. You know, you're you're putting your your winter feed in place, and also you need a, a quality feed there as well to reduce feed costs over the winter period. So now is now is a good time to be thinking about your, the fertilizer requirements for that silage crop, and ensuring you have the right fertilizers in the right balance to grow that crop in. Like you're heading into a very responsive time of the year, Kieran. Like April, mm. May. You know that's where you're going to maximize uh, grass production, maximize quality grass for your your winter feed stock. So now is a great time to be thinking about that. And look, Mark, on most dry stuff farms, that's the biggest application. It's going to go out near on ground, so it's important we get it right. Maybe if we break that down a little, like you talked to you about getting the balance right. I suppose we start with the basic one: nitrogen to put it growing. What's our requirements for nitrogen on the silage crop? How much should we be going with? Yeah, nitrogen is, is, is key for driving yield. Um, you know, very, very important, as I said, number one, getting yield, but also you don't want to overdo it in terms of that you can affect, you know, silage quality. So, Kieran, we, we recommend somewhere in the region about 80 to 100 units per acre. And, you know, I suppose, look, if you have older swards, maybe that haven't been receded, you know, maybe there could be 10 years or more um, with low levels of ryegrass. We're generally talking, you know, 80, 80 units of nitrogen per acre, uh, where you maybe have more productive or maybe fresher grasses with more ryegrasses in those fields. We're looking at up to 100 units of nitrogen per acre. Uh, and again, sure. like you know, we're, we're we're going to grow somewhere in the region of about four or five tons of dry matter. That that's our our, our target yield for that first uh, cut of grass silage. Mark, some always comes up on top of nitrogen. And from fertilizer to cut, how much uptake are we getting on a daily basis with? Well, generally you're budgeting there, like you know, um, at closing, like two units per day. Like that's the average. So again, you know, if we spread a hundred units of nitrogen per acre, like we're talking fifty units, or sorry, we're talking fifty days, then between closing and, and cutting to have that nitrogen, you know, utilized or taken up, um, in in that window. That's a big period. Okay, right. That's one component of it. In terms of the phosphorus and the potassium, what's the crops requirement there, and why is that important? The, the P and K is very, very important. Um, again, in terms of your requirement, if you take to grow a crop, if we take that five ton of dry matter or that, that 10 ton of fresh uh, grass per acre, we're looking at 16 units of phosphorus and about 100 units of potassium. So that's that's very, very important in terms of driving uh, the nitrogen or, or inc- increase in the, the utilisation of that nitrogen in terms of growing that grass in that very responsive time of the year. And I suppose also, let's not forget, I know... Um, the window is probably not there at the minute, but again, it's very, very important to have the pH right on those fields as well in terms of driving that that fertilizer use efficiency and, and driving that yield uh, during that time. Probably something that's overlooked is there is that offtake with silage. We can quickly deplete soil fertility in the field if we don't actually get in with that. Just in terms of the K application, and it's probably one thing we do overlook a little bit on farms. How much can we go with it? What's the maximum amount you recommend going with in spring? Yeah, the, the potash again, it's it's uh, silage crops take off a, a lot of potash compared to say the, the grazing situation. You're taking off, um, you know, probably six, seven times more K in, in, in the cut crop. Like we generally talk, you know, you know, somewhere in the bracket of 80 to 100 units of K per acre. And again, you know, again, uh, I suppose avoid putting out large amounts of K. And, um, you know, if you take that, you know, cattle slurry, you know, a good quality cattle story could contain, uh, you know, 25, 30 units of K per thousand gallons. So again, you know, we're we're keeping at somewhere around 80 to 100 units per acre of, of K to avoid um, luxury 
consumption or, or luxury uptake, you know, um, in that crop that's growing very, very fast. And again, very important, Kieran, that, you know, especially on those low index soils that where there is additional K required that you come back after the crop has mm. been cut to maintain those K levels because K is very, very important in sustaining um, good yields of, of grass silage. And just maybe for listeners, Mark, what you mean by luxury uptake? Again, that the, the crop will, you know, if, if it's there, the crop will take it up. You know what I mean? That the grass will take it up and it'll go away in, in the cut crop. Um, and, um, you know, it'll go into the silage pit. And it can cause some issues then with particular types of livestock, you know, um, yeah. you know feeding out in, in the springtime. Yeah. So we don't want to look at the cost. We don't want that happening. So that's an important limit. Look, given the fact that it's hungry on it, most times we're going to rely on our organic manures on the farm to supply a lot. It's in particular story, maybe in the case in sheep farms where it's more limited farmyard manure. Talk to me a little bit about how much can we get from, well, in particular cattle, sorry, because we'll have a lot of mixed farms out there. How much can it supply? And then maybe we'll talk a little bit about fees that might got farmyard manure in the back in the last year. Okay. Well, Kieran, if, if, you, if you take, like, ideally, the, the cattle slurry should be going back to the silage ground. So, again, you're you're completing that nutrient loop. You're, you know, you're recycling uh, the peas and the Ks. Uh, the cattle slurry is very valuable uh, in terms of, of P and K. If you take a 1,000 gallons of good quality cattle slurry applied with, with low emission, we're looking at something like a 9,532 in terms of N, P and K. So, that's the available N, P and K in that cattle slurry and is very rich, especially in potassium. Like if you take, say, two and a half to three thousand gallons per acre, you know, it will supply the majority of the P and K for that crop of grass silage. And also very important to remember as well, Kieran, is that it can supply about 30 percent of the crop's nitrogen requirement. You know, if you take 3,000 gallons at nine units of available nitrogen per thousand gallons, that's about 27 units of nitrogen. So very, mm-hmm. very important that we make that adjustment, you know, when we're putting out the, the remaining nitrogen um, on, on our silage crop. So you, it's kind of punching above a half bag urea, more or less that 3,000 gallons in terms of nitrogen going on. Yeah, it, yeah, yeah. If, if, if you take, if you take, yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's, 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 yeah, it's, it's over half a bag of urea. And again, you know, if, if that could go out and then maybe come back, you know, possibly in a fortnight's time, then with your nitrogen in terms of topping up that crop, um, that would be a good way to go. Like, So obviously, look, the capital story is a, it's a very straightforward and we know how much we're going with. It can meet that demand. If that field I've got family yard manure mark, how much can that contribute to the P&K? Well, again, I, I, you know, if the, I suppose it depends on the amount of farmyard manure, but if you take a typical application, Kieran, of say 10 tonnes of good quality farmyard manure, again, probably going out in the back end of the year, probably going out maybe, say, mid to late August, early September, it will supply the majority of P's and K's for that crop. So you're coming back in the springtime then with your 80 to 100 units of nitrogen and possibly best split that, you know, maybe go at half, um, and of the nitrogen, then come back to the remaining um, 50% of the nitrogen in two weeks' time. Just when you mentioned in timing, just the lag between cattle slurry going out or any slurry going out really and nitrogen application, maybe even if that field had got lime, is there any time lag we should be aware of there? Uh, in terms of the lime, we, we like to have three months between uh, spreading and, 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 and cutting. And in terms of slurry and fertilizer, we like to leave a week. So if you go with your, your say your 3,000 gallons of cattle slurry, come back in a week's time then with your first split of nitrogen. Mark, we talked about the MP and K. What about sulfur? Why is that important? Yeah, yeah sulfur is, is very, very important. It's, it's very, very important in terms of protein formation. It's also very, very important in terms of nitrogen uptake. Uh, we'd also have worked there from Johnstown Castle that it it, incre- in, it increases the efficiency of nitrogen utilization by the grass crop, and it also can reduce um, nitrate leaching. And again, we're seeing yield responses cured of up to two and a half tons per hectare of grass dry matter. Again, in that very responsive time, that sort of March to June, July um, time. Yes, yeah, so sulfur. We don't need a lot of sulfur. But again, we, we generally talk about, you know, somewhere in the region of, of, of 15 units per cut of grass silage. But yes, okay. sulfur, very, 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 very important nutrient uh, in terms of nitrogen utilization. So the options for getting that incorporated into it, obviously, is the nitrogen product we need to be looking at as a plus S. 
Yeah, you're you're generally talking if you're going to protected urea, you're generally talking the thirty eight percent nitrogen and uh, the seven and a half percent sulfur. Um, maybe in the absence of say slurry, um, where you're going maybe straight fertilizer, you could consider you know something like a you know a thirteen six twenty with sulfur or a ten five twenty five with sulfur, um, or maybe if you're going with, say oh seven thirty, you could be again going back to um. Your 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 nitrogen with sulfur uh, okay. to get that 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 you know that that fifteen units of um, sulfur out. So there are options out there, but that obviously takes a little bit of planning when you're going buying your fertilizer. There there is plenty of options out there. You know what I mean. Again, a lot of the fertilizers, either the nitrogens or the compounds, now would would come with with sulfur included. Like your compounds generally have about three percent sulfur the likes of your your 13620s or your 10525s that have about three percent sulfur and your nitrogens then would have you know five, six, seven percent sulfur depending on the actual product. Look Mark, we focus a lot on the silage. I suppose it's no harm considering too, especially if we're going to purchase that fertilizer silage, what we need to buy for our grazing for the summer. And particularly we were starting to approach the second round application. In terms of our nitrogen supply, in terms of going with compound and even, as we just mentioned, sulfur, for dry stock farms for grazing, what should they be considering? In in terms of, I suppose, a balanced, a well-balanced fertiliser in, in my book for, for the dry stock side of the house is, is something like 18612 with sulfur. You know what I mean? Um you know, it's it's a it's a very good form of, of nitrogen. It's it's probably giving you the right amount of nitrogen to, to go out as well, Kieran. And also yeah. it's probably the best way of buying peas and K's. Um, in this country, um, is eighteen six twelve. Um, and I suppose the main reason is that that it's made in 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 volume, um, and it's yeah. used in volume in this country. Okay, so that's a good option. And then for the for the nitrogen source for the summer, protected urea should be the product of choice. Yeah, look, protected urea again, um, is is a good product. Again, it's you know all the trial work would show that protected urea is is growing as as much grass as any said. The, the likes of a of a can based um product and again will you know perform the same uh, during the the summer the summer window there. And Mark, just some would have concerns with the protection and how long it lasts for. And I think like there's been some recent changes there to find out when it was actually bagged up. Yeah, um, I suppose Kieran, there's there's um, I suppose two main products on the market in terms of the protected urea. Um, there's the straight NBPT. Um, and again, you know, we, we talk about a six month shelf life for that product. And then there is a double inhibitor, um, as in the Lemus. Um, it's the NBPT plus the 2N um, plus the NPPT. And again, that's yeah. 12 months um, on this on the straight 46. So again, you know, you, ha- you have two options there. And I suppose something new as well, Kieran, is now the, the blenders are putting a, 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 a date of treatment. Um, on the label, so when you buy your protected urea, you'll you'll you can see a date as as to when the product um was treated, and again it has between six and twelve month shelf life, depending on the inhibitor that that you purchase. So Mark, given the fact that we're now at the start of April, that's going to cover the vast majority of us for the grazing season. Exactly, exactly, and a lot of that product is being bagged or being treated as we speak. So yeah, exactly, Kieran. Like you know, it's it you know it it will cover uh, for the for the remainder of the the grazing season. Mark, just maybe finally, like, and it's maybe hard to look at, at the moment because growth rates are probably low. But at some point in the next couple of weeks, things are going to take off. Some products are going to get ahead of us. The need to put back nutrients if we do take off takes off grazing ground. It's something that's maybe often overlooked. And maybe they need to get back slurry on some of that ground that the silage is coming off again. It's a good question, Kieran. Um, I suppose that the one thing that we are seeing from the research in Johnstown Castle is that anywhere that the slurry is going back, especially, especially on the silage ground, um, compared to fertilizer only, like we're seeing about a yield response somewhere in the region of 1.5 tons of dry matter per hectare, where that slurry is going back. And you might ask the question, why? Well, it's very much dri- driven by the organic matter or the carbon, and you're feeding the biology in the soil, and that's driving the the increase in um grass dry matter yield. So yes very very important if you can get the slurry or the farmyard manure back to the silage fields there's big benefits there in, in growing more grass or having a bigger pit of silage uh, a, a, huge, you know. a hugely important asset on the farm then. yeah absolutely Mark thank you very much that was a very useful update today great having you on ok thanks Gerdon no bother
Okay, we'll leave it there for this week's episode. I'd like to thank Mark again for coming on us, for sharing some very useful insights in what's needed for this year's silage crop and indeed for grazing applications for the rest of the summer. That's it for me for up this summer sheep program. Keep an eye on our Twitter page at Chalga Sheep. I'm Kieran Lynch. Thanks for joining us. Don't forget to follow us and subscribe wherever you get your podcasts.